What if I told you that being a parent could also be your secret weapon in entrepreneurship? And what if I also told you that most parent entrepreneurs out there, they're doing it all wrong? You intrigued? Well, you're going to want to stick around because today we're going to be diving deep into controversial and often untold truths about being a parent entrepreneur, the difference between a logo and a brand. You do not want to miss this. Being an entrepreneur sounds like, yes, another new client. I did it. But it can also sound like, I am really not understanding this technology and I'm feeling so overwhelmed. Am I even cut out for this? That's why I started the Dark Horse Entrepreneur Podcast to help infopreneurs, coaches, and course creators who want to build a business online but are battling technology, overwhelm, procrastination, and even imposter syndrome. Think successfully, think differently, think bigger, and take action by learning tips from an array of business owners, all dropping knowledge on the Dark Horse Entrepreneur Podcast. Check us out at www.darkhorseschooling.com. What is up? What is up? What the heck is up, my Dark Horse Entrepreneur parents? All right, let's start right off. Picture this. You're on a Zoom call. You're you're getting ready to close that deal. And suddenly, in walks your toddler who has just decided it's perfect time for their runway modeling expose. (laughs) Sound familiar? Welcome to the high stakes, high rewards world of being a parent and an entrepreneur. But here's the kicker. I have to ask you, are you just surviving this chaos? Or perhaps you are one of the wise ones that's strategically navigating it. Well, today we're going to redefine what it means to wear both hats successfully. Look, If you've ever questioned your place in hustle culture, wondering if you're just another face in the crowd or that you're a standout brand, well, then today's episode is going to be your wake-up call. We're diving deep, and trust me, I'm not going to be holding back. We're going to be tackling the myths, the taboos, and the downright uncomfortable truths about being an entrepreneur parent. We're going to explore why some parent entrepreneurs soar like boom, straight to the moon, while others just kind of wah, 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 flop. And let me tell you, it's not just about having a killer business plan or that Pinterest perfect family. Mm -mm. By the end of this episode, you're going to be armed with some actionable strategies to elevate your game, both in the boardroom and in the playroom. We're going to be talking about some paradigm shifts, people. And I'm not talking about a couple of coins being rubbed together. I'm talking about shifting some thought processes. So if you're ready to challenge that status quo, you've come to the right place. If you're ready to step into a new realm of possibilities, you've come to the right place. Let's cut straight to the chase. Let's get right through the noise. You've heard it all before. Uh, Sometimes I was the one saying it. I know I've heard it all before, so I know you've heard this before. Find that perfect work-life balance, they say. Be a super parent, they say. Be a super entrepreneur, they say. But I want to get real with you for a second. What if I told you, heck, I'm going to tell you, but what if I told you that the whole concept of work-life balance, yeah, it's a scam. It's a sham. It's bullshit. I'm sorry. I'm just calling it like this. Buckle up, all right? Because we're about to bust this myth wide open. First, let's tackle this unicorn, this elephant in the room of work-life balance. Look, being a parent and an entrepreneur, it ain't about balance. It's about integration. Ah, that's the new magic word I want you to remember. Because here's the thing. Balance implies that there's equilibrium, right? There's this 50-50 split. I got a 50 over here and I got a 50 over there. Mm -mm, That's not how it is. You know, I can feel you nodding. Right there, going off in your head. Yeah, he's right. Ask any parent entrepreneur out there and they will tell you it's more like 80-20. Hell, sometimes it's more like 90-10 and guess what? The ratio flips back and forth like a fish on dry land multiple times a day. Think about it, right? One minute, there you are. You're on that business call. The next minute, what are you doing? Well, you're doing that Princess Runway show I just talked about or you're doing homework. That isn't balance, my friends. That's integration. So stop 
chasing balance and start focusing on integrating both of your roles as a parent and as an entrepreneur seamlessly. About a decade or two ago, after speaking at a Toastmaster convention, I once met this CEO who, as it turned out, was also a single dad. And he said, and remember, CEO of Fortune 500 company here, he said his best decisions happened while he was making dinner for his kids. That, my friends, is integration, okay? But let's bring in some wisdom from a marketing guru. Many of you have maybe read his book, Seth Godin. He talks about the difference between a brand and a logo. Now, a logo, as we know, is just a symbol, right? So Nike swoosh, Coca-Cola wave, whatever it might be. I've got the horse on a shield, but a brand, ooh, a brand. Now, a brand is a promise. A brand is an expectation. So here's what I want you to do. I want you to ask yourself, as an entrepreneur parent, are you a logo or are you a brand? Hmm? Are you just going through the motions or are you setting expectations? And, of course, delivering on them. Here's the thing. Your kids know the difference. And I can guarantee you that if your kids know, so do your clients. If you're a brand, you are just not another parent entrepreneur. You are the parent entrepreneur. You're the parent entrepreneur that everyone wants to emulate. And here's where we're going to stir the pot. I'm going to get a little controversial right here. If you're sorting through your life and your business by price, like, you know, things like opting for the cheapest daycare or the quickest meal prep or the most affordable business tools, then you, my friend, are not a brand. You're just a logo. I'm just going to call it like I see it, okay? Brands, my friends, think about it. Brands don't compete on price. They compete on value. Hershey's is a brand. Price. Godiva brand. Oh, same business. Value. Get it? So if you're making decisions solely based on what's cheapest, you, my friend, are selling yourself short, both as a parent and as an entrepreneur. Let me break this down for you. Let's say you're choosing a daycare based on the price. What message are you sending to your counterpart, to your child, or to the world as a whole? The, the message you're saying is that childcare is a commodity. And if you're picking business tools as an entrepreneur by what's cheapest, how the hell are you delivering the best value to your clients? Think about it, right? Now, I get it. I, you can't afford everything that's the most expensive. But often, 80% of the time, you're going, okay, maybe I can go this way. Okay? All right. Let me step back for a second. Oh, getting a little riled up here. So we've shattered some myths. I, I've stirred the pot a little bit. Maybe you're getting ready to push that stop. But what the hell is this guy talking about? But hey, don't take my word for it. No, no, no. We're going to dive into some cold, hard facts that prove being a parent entrepreneur isn't just a lifestyle it's a strategic advantage what did he just say advantage yes it's a strategic advantage and there's a reason why i just stirred the pot and wanted you to wake up a little bit here because these advantages are yours for the taking all right did you know and if you didn't i'm about ready to tell you that according to a harvard business review study. Parent entrepreneurs are 30% more likely to succeed in their ventures compared to their childless counterparts. Shocking, right? What? I didn't know that. Did you? And here's the thing. It's not just about having kids. It's about leveraging those parental skills that you gained by having children, one or multiple. Think about it. How many skills have you gained? Time management? <laughs> yeah, right. Multitasking? Okay, there's a little bit of a gray cloud there in my opinion, but that's okay. You can multitask. How about conflict resolution? You see, the skills that you've earned, hard-earned, and honed as a parent are directly transferable into your business. Here's another interesting tidbit. There's another study from the Kaufman Foundation that found that businesses that were started by parents had a 35% higher ROI. Hmm, now wait a minute. Now in the previous episode, I kind of mocked that 
Uh, some folks will get asked, hey, what are you? And, oh, I'm a parent entrepreneur. And, you know, I poked fun at, at Pinterest. But here's the thing. The next time that someone questions your ability to be both a parent and an entrepreneur, hit them with those stats. Parent entrepreneurs, 35% higher ROI and 30% more likely to succeed in their ventures. Those are hard facts, ladies and gentlemen. Look them up for yourself. But here's the thing. It is not a one-way street. Your entrepreneurial skills can also make you a better parent. And another study from the University of California found that children of entrepreneurs are more adaptable. Children of entrepreneurs are better problem solvers. And children of entrepreneurs are far more resilient. Why? Well, I'm about to tell you. Because they're exposed to risk-taking. They're exposed to failure, and they're exposed to the art of the hustle from an early age. Heck, I don't even care if yours is, is in an early age anymore. If they're exposed, they see you navigating those challenges, and they learn to do the same. Now, let's flip it. Your parenting skills, empathy, patience, the ability to teach, huh? Okay, can make you a better leader can make you a better negotiator. Hell, it can even make you a better salesperson. Here's the thing. It's a symbiotic relationship, ladies and gentlemen, parent and entrepreneur. So the next time that you're feeling overwhelmed, remember, you're not just juggling responsibilities. You, my friends, are leveraging a unique skill set that sets you apart in the boardroom as well as in the playroom the boardroom or the living room even, right? And so for those skeptics who still are out there thinking that you, my friend, you, yes, I'm pointing, I'm looking right at you. And if you're not watching this, you're just listening to it. I I'm right in your ear. I'm talking to you. The data begs to differ. You, my friend, are not just a parent. You, my friend, are not just an entrepreneur. You are a powerhouse of skills and experiences that make you exceptional at being both a parent and an entrepreneur. All right, my dark horse entrepreneur parents, we've busted myths. We've dropped some data bombs. Now let's roll up our sleeves and get right down to business. I always want to leave you some actionable tips. So here are the actionable tips that we can implement today to level up both your parenting game as well as your entrepreneurial side hustle or your main hustle. You ready? Let's do this. Tip number one, stop sorting by price. Yeah, let's talk about investment. And no, I'm not talking about investing in stocks and bonds. I'm talking about investing in quality, whether it's childcare or whether it's the business tools. Remember this one thing. If you listen to nothing else in this episode, remember this. You get what you pay for. Skimping on quality is like shooting yourself in the damn foot. Would you buy a cheap car seat for your child? Hmm? I, try, I can't afford it, Tracy. Fine. Find it on sale somewhere, but buy the quality. Will you opt for subpar business tools for your clients? Mm, no, you shouldn't. Okay? Now, I'm not saying you got to buy the top line of everything, but get the quality. If you have to give up one thing to get the quality in something else, well, then you start weighing those balances, right? Look, here's the thing. I knew a guy start off in his entrepreneur venture and it was going great and he went for the cheapest damn crm software that he could find the end of the story is six months in it crashed and he lost all of his customer data and he had built up probably i don't want to you know, overestimate i want to know it was at least 100 customers i want to say it was 120 but it was at least 100 all gone just like that don't be that guy okay tip number two integrate don't separate yeah we talked about a little earlier so next we're going to talk about integration once again you've got a unique set of skills from being a parent use them in your business you have a unique set of skills from being an entrepreneur or working in business even if you're still in the cubicle trying to escape use them as a parent for instance the patience that you have developed from dealing with your toddler or your teenager Huh? That's going to come in real handy during some tough negotiations. And we all know as parents how tough a negotiator a toddler can be. Hmm? How about that knack for multitasking you've gained as a parent? And that is a gold mine in the entrepreneurial world. So in this arena, do not compartmentalize your life. 
integrate your skills and watch yourself excel in both realms as a parent and an entrepreneur. Tip number three, be distinct or my friends, be extinct. Finally, let's talk about standing out. In this world of logos, I want you to be a brand. Carve out a unique value proposition that sets you apart from everyone else out there. Someone looks at you and says, wow, no one else is doing it like that. No one else provides service like that. So whether it's a unique service, a killer product, or an unforgettable customer experience, find that one thing that makes you, you. And just don't apply it to your business. Mm -mm, no, no. I want you to apply it to your parenting style as well. Yeah. Go ahead. Create family traditions. Instill old ones back in to your family life. Instill unique values. Let's go ahead and make your family a brand that's as distinct and as memorable as you build your business to be. <laughs> How about that? Yeah, folks. Three actionable tips that are not just theory. I think these are game changers. Wouldn't you say? Okay, I, I see. I, I feel some of you nodding. Other, you're like, well, I don't know. Here's the thing: give them a try. Go out there and implement these, and you won't just be a parent, and you or you won't just be an entrepreneur. You, my friend, will become a force to be reckoned with. Okay, so anybody that's been listening to the Dark Horse Entrepreneur Podcast from the beginning knows we've been here a little over three years now, and the podcast is has shifted its focus. Actually. It's narrowed its focus each time as we've gone along, okay? And most recently, let me back up and tell the story first. Most recently, I have a daughter who's in her 30s, and she has a daughter of her own. I believe she just turned 10. And not long ago, while I was wrestling with where I wanted to take this podcast, I knew I needed to niche down further and I could, so that I could truly deliver value to a core group of folks that were hungry for what I had to offer and were someone that I felt I could truly help. About the same time, I got the call from my daughter I was, that I just mentioned, and she was asking about going to college. Not that I wanted, she wanted me to pay for it or anything. She was just, she was just bouncing ideas off me. She was also talking about wanting to start a bakery business and she wanted to leverage the knowledge that she would gain from her collegiate experience, you know, taking business classes and what have you. And also wanted some parental advice about guiding her daughter, right? So there was multiple conversations. It was a long conversation. And to be honest, it turned in, like I said, to multiple conversations, as you can imagine. And luckily, as we chatted, I learned she already had the answers that she was looking for. I think she was just looking for someone to bounce them off of, to reassure her that what she was thinking was the course that she really wanted to go on. And I was trying to be the good dad. I wasn't trying to say, yes, do it this way and do it that way. Because like all of you and all of your businesses and all of your families, everyone's a little different. Okay. But I, I realized that she already had the foundation. She had built the foundation. And okay, I'm not tooting my own horn here, but I am. She, she credited some of that to her dad, me. And I was humbled, obviously, and shortly after that, that's when it hit me. Shit, this is my tribe. Parents who want the best for their kids and who want to do the cubicle escape the right way, right? And what I mean by the right way is not these get-rich-quick schemes that we hear about all the time in MLMs. And I'm not downtrotting, and there's some good ones out there. I don't think there's any good get rich quick schemes, but there might be some good MLMs out there. So I don't want to throw shade on them. But instead, building something that they and their children can not only be proud of, but would learn from, all while providing some service or some product to their tribes, to your tribe, that was not only needed, but was valued. So here's the question. What's your origin story? What's your learning moment? What's your bottom of the barrel moment? Or what is your just aha moment in general that has set you on this parent entrepreneurial path? I mean, you're listening to me right now, right? 20 some minutes into this. I want to hear from you. Hell, let's get you on this podcast to share that story 
with my audience, with others, and inspire even more folks out there, shall we? Just go ahead and email me, Tracy at DarkHorseSchooling.com, or come on over and connect with us in the Dark Horse Tribe. We'll talk about that in a second. But first, whew, <laughs> yeah, we've gone from myth busting to data dropping to, of course, the actual steps I always want to leave you with. We've covered some serious ground here, but before we part ways on today's episode, let's make sure that we're taking this newfound wisdom straight into the real world, all right? We've shattered the illusion of the work-life balance, and we've embraced the power of work-life integration, okay? Can't always balance the scales, but you can integrate them. We dove into the difference between a logo and a brand, both as a parent and an entrepreneur. And I'm hoping that I've armed you with three game-changing tips that you will put into place to elevate both your game as a parent and your game as an entrepreneur. But don't think we're done shaking things up. Mm-mm, no. Because then it's starting with the next episode. Now, it may, it may take a couple of episodes to get it to you, but I'm going to lay out a unique business service, an actual business service that you can go ahead and take and use on your own. Yeah, you heard me right. I'm going to be giving away an actual service that after you listen, you can go out and sell to local business owners that you know or that you patronize yourself, ones that you yourself buy from, all right? And I'm going to give it all away for free. Well, okay, I'm going to give it away for the cost of spending your time with me. Call it my free gift to you that you do not even have to give me your email address for. <laughs> All right, we'll, we'll get into that starting in the next episode. But in the meantime, if this episode maybe shook your foundations a little, hmm, did you a little favor, do me a favor, share it with another parent entrepreneur or entrepreneur that's hoping to be a parent, and let's build a community that's not just about logos, but re about real distinct brands. And hey, if you're looking for a tribe that gets it, join us over at the Dark Horse Entrepreneur Tribe Facebook group. Easiest way to get there is go to darkhorseschooling.com backslash tribe. That will take you straight there. Sign right on in and we'll get you straight into the action. But hey, before you dash off and go out, conquer the world as a parent entrepreneur, one last thing. A huge thank you. Yeah. A thank you to each and every one of you for tuning in. Your time is valuable, and I'm honored that you chose to spend a little bit with us here at the Dark Horse Entrepreneur Podcast. If you found any value in this episode, do me a favor. Hit the subscribe button. Leave a review if you're on uh, Apple or Spotify. If your platform has the ability for you to leave a review or a rating, please do that. Your feedback not only helps us climb a little bit in the charts so that we can reach more parent entrepreneurs out there, but it also helps create content that serves you better. And with that, I'm going to leave you as I always do. Think successfully and take action. Thank you for listening to the Dark Horse Entrepreneur Podcast. You know Thanks for tuning in. Check us out at www.darkhorseschooling.com. All right. My name is Tracy Brinkman.